Pa- Papirin, you look good. Look at that. Look at that. Like, I don't I look see, good. No, like, I look good. You because I don't want my, my, my posture to look like I'm just like laying back. I don't like He's that. He's bored. He has to get out of like casa. Just make yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah just. Like, yeah, just no, I don't see. I don't want to do that. That's why. Yeah, okay, just okay. just make sure like on the microphone, it's like uh, right on top of it. So right direct. Everybody good? Yes. I kind of like this intro last time. Damn, wait till it's like podcast, baby. Most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go. Ya mero al fin del año. Triste. New year, new me coming in. Always three more weeks. <laughs> I, I know, go. but do go for everybody that doesn't know just yet. After like 139 episodes after this, I got my guy Pepe sitting in, Mister yeah. Viral, Mister Spinning Facts, dude. Whatever he said got to me, dog. I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> Womenizer, stop, ladies, stop, ladies. Stop he's, he's single. He's single right now. So for make the sure you get, out there. make sure you guys send in the the resumes. You know. Genesis will screen them. Thank you. Yep, that's the manager right there, too. That's an in-house manager. But today we have the pleasure, man. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure of sitting in with Mr. Tony Directs in the house, baby. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me here. Appreciate it. Thank you to coming to San Diego to come and film with us. San Diego. This is San Diego? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yup. This yeah, this San, is like San whoa. Diego's changed. Nah, nah. This is this is uh, Beverly Hills. This is Beverly Hills. Oh, we're yeah, in yeah. Beverly Hills, y'all. We moved up. Yeah, yeah. Moving you know, on up. That's man, right. podcasting, man. It could change your Shit. life forever. <laughs> Get to it. Get to it. Start podcasting if you haven't. I know, no. right now. But seriously, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Nah, it's a pleasure, man. Kind of quick little back. We literally just met last two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. <laughs> two no, weeks. A week ago. A week. It's been a week. A week ago. I said about, about a week, week ago. ago. Hey, Ooh. hey. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, about a, literally a week ago, and I believe you got to know a little bit more of us because of the episode with Jay Valentino. Mm-hmm. Shout out Jay Valentino. Shout out to Jay Valentino, man. Man, he's DJing tonight. We're about to go pull up. Oh, at really? Park. Yeah. yeah. At, at Park, park, at in, park San in San Diego. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Crazy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're wholesome. When Genesis is with us, we try to be very wholesome, very calm, That's you know, right. because she's going to hit us. You got to have that one friend that. You know, she'll support what you're doing, and then the next day be like, "Yo, dude, what are you thinking? Mm, what are you that, thinking?" That's her. That's her. That's her. That's that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, the youngest one, but <laughs> hey, she's the mom of the group. Are you the oldest of uh, in your family? How many? Quantos are? It's six of us. Chinga yeah, damn. it's six of us, and I'm the third. So I'm middle. like in the middle. Oh, you're the 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 madre. Child, yeah. Ah, man. The desmadre. Mom, my mom reminds me. Every time she can, like, I was pregnant, you had me in court because of your desmadres in middle school, and I'm just like, mom, that was like years ago, why do you keep dragging that on? Like, why don't you remember the good times and not the bad times? Like, I'm a changed person. <laughs> she still brings that yeah. shit up. Uh, parents will hold, hold whatever you did over your head, even if you have kids, when you're married, when you moved out, when you're already in your... Close to your deathbed, they'd be like, Te acuerdas? Yep. Te acuerdas? Because I remember. <laughs> I remember. Dude, I'm telling you. But they say because of us stressing them, they get older. My mom tells me all the time, it's like, no, You don't mention la culpa. Me. I think it's time. No, si, si. Really? You don't were you, wait, were you a good boy growing up or a bad boy? I was a good boy. He looks like he was a good boy. Oh, shit. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, I don't know. It, it can be good, but. What, it depends, like, in. In the relationship, because the good guys always lose. Now I'm toxic so, as fuck. I was. <laughs> good- oh wow! Oh my god! Now, I'm toxic I mean, as fuck. Now I'm toxic. I didn't know I was toxic. That is toxic. Being, being a part of this group has real has made me realize that I'm toxic. Just a little yeah, bit. So just a little bit. Practically talk. putting the blame on you guys for being toxic. No, they called That's me crazy. out. They crazy. called me out. They called me out on it. That's They're really like, hey, you know what? Those Wait, are what, what, toxic what, tendencies. What makes you toxic? I don't Ooh. know. Tell the what, what, what's something that makes you toxic? We check locations. I, I, oh, all the time. Oh, you check locations? We check mm, locations. Oh, you're lying. I know you're lying. Or when the location turns off, hey, what happened? Where you at? My phone died. Oh, my God. <laughs> my phone died. It's usually, I have no battery. Hey, why, why did you leave me on red and why are you posting and not responding to me yet? Not even me and my boyfriend track our locations. 
No? No. It's like, that's funny. You can post on Instagram, but... We can't reply. You can't reply to my message. Oh, you can send memes, but you can't text me back? Oh. Wow. You yeah. guys are toxic. Oh, my God. And then if they took like an hour to reply, then instead of me replying in 30 seconds, I'm going to wait two minutes. I'm going to lag it. I'm not important enough. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> they made me wait an hour. They're going to wait an hour, too. And this then, is a very toxic group here. Just I'm a little, little afraid. Bit that, that's why we compliment each other so much. Oh, shit. I'm toxic, so too. So I'm okay. <laughs> We're all on the same boat. I'm toxic, too. Wait, you're toxic with oh, your boyfriend, yeah. too? That could Are be you? pretty toxic. Meeting your boyfriend at the movie, man, he looks so calm. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a teddy so bear. Chill. No, he's yeah. chill. So he's sad. a teddy bear. We Don't thought that was though. we thought that was your security guard. I'm Don't like, dang, go beat us up. Don't get a mad. Yeah, I was like, damn, we're taking a picture. I'm of like, him. I'm like, security guard's looking I'm at like, us. Beat us up. Handshake, oh, no. to, handshake, Tony. Hug to, like, I don't want to like I'm get like, tackled. Can we, can we up here? <laughs> Hand up here. Don't get too close. Uh, uh, Don't get air too hug, close. Air hugs. I'm, I'm yeah, all like this with you guys, <laughs> and we're like, hey, they're looking at us. Was it me? Was it me? So, how long you been with your boyfriend? It's gonna be. It's been four four years and three months. Four years, three months, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah four years into my longest relationship. Oh, he likes to say, your longest relationship and your only relationship. He's, like, very quick on that. He's so made, he's stating like, the fact. Yeah. He's so made, it's it's my fact. longest relationship and his longest relationship. Man, so before your boyfriend came into the picture, did I you believe... We didn't even have to ask. <laughs> I was a hoe. <laughs> he knew. He yeah. knew uh, where we were going. I was a hoe. Were you? Yeah. For sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, I have to be. Okay. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Nothing. Can... Is he good? He's chilling. Okay, because chilling. I try to like, all right, we're going to ease this, to kind of like get sentimental and the, like, let's He's ask like, the nah. details. You're like, nah, I'm going to be straight up. <laughs> I, was I was out there. I was out there. I was in the streets. I was for the streets. I was for the streets. Okay, so what made you kind of settle in then? Settle down? I don't know. I think when I met him... Was when everything changed. I we both say it. It was love at first sight. Like when mm. we met each other, we went out to eat. He reposted one of my videos on social media. I wrote him back like, "Hey, thanks, bro. Appreciate it." And he was like, uh, "You know, I was like, we should get we should get some food sometime." And he was like, "All right, bet." So we met up, and the rest was history. Hey, the rest was history. Was history. Yeah. It was like, oh, I'm bagging this one, man. So before bagging it, I definitely do not want to jump. Everything, right? Because you're a YouTuber, you are an actor, and you're an actor. Yeah, so let, let's let's yeah, we we seen you, that. man. Ooh. How the Gringo stole Christmas, which is out right now, sitting at number six. six. By the time this comes out, it should number be one. My number one. Let's make it number one. Hey, it's gonna let's be make there. It number one. So you guys gotta go watch it, order it, buy it. Tell your moms, your tias, your Sanchez, your Sanchos, their Sanchez and Sanchos, everybody. everybody, everybody. Hey. Everybody. Everybody. Everyone can get it. Everybody can Everybody get it. Can get it. <laughs> yeah, everyone can watch it. Everyone can get it. <laughs> Fuck it. Bring yeah. them all in one room together. Oh, my God. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be fun. That'd be interesting. That'd be an interesting one. But fun. When, did, when did you fall into social media? When did you fall into making content? As crazy as it sounds, probably around like 2014, 2015, okay. maybe even 2013. Like I was like, oh, like. Let me just, I, I had a roommate and he was, he was a YouTuber mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what? I want to make videos too. And I just started little by little, but I wasn't consistent when I started okay. like the first five years of me making content. I was like posting once a month, if not once every two months. Mm. And I okay. kid you not, like it was doing something for me, but it wasn't doing a lot. So once I talked to my friend who I can say really pushed me to do social media and go even harder was legend forever. Mm. When I talked to him one day, he was like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like you're working a nine to five. Like you hate it. You're talented. Like, why don't you start doing social media full time? And I didn't think it was possible yeah. to the point where I can like quit my job and do it full time. But I'm here now and it's, it's a beautiful thing. But yeah, I started, I've been doing content for a while, but not consistently, but mm. That was my biggest downfall. Has has there ever been at one point like a, an issue with like confidence or kind of like, again, I think one of the biggest things for social media and I just had this conversation was like being out there and you're going to get judged by the world. Oh, yeah. No matter like you think your content is really good, but, you know, the other person watching it may be like, 
Bro, you look stupid as shit. You yeah. disagree. They're like, yeah. it's cringy. How do you oh, deal yeah. with that? Yeah, oh. so dealing with the adversity of negativity, how do you deal with the negative comments from an early stage? Because this is 2013, 2014. Yeah. This is, even right now where everything is still very hardcore, mm-hmm. this is back then where, I mean, there was no, definitely no filters. No. What was said, what was, like, what people were saying and doing, like, it's a lot different than what it is now because obviously yeah. the cancel culture and everything that's going around, but mm-hmm. back then it was like they're gonna say how it is and como caiga. So how did you deal with that? I dealt with negativity by not dealing with negativity. Okay. To be honest, I didn't get a lot of negativity when I first started putting out videos. I'm not even kidding you. I did not really get any negativity. I actually just recently started experiencing a lot of negativity. Mm. So I like recent. Um, I, I've been putting out these videos that have been a little controversial, okay. but also a lot of people have been getting very upset at, to the point where I've been getting death threats. I've been getting people messaging me saying like, oh my God, I, w- I can't wait till the day that somebody catches you slipping. Like yeah. crazy, Dang. crazy. And I'm like, it's shocking to me now because I'm like, even when I came out of the closet yeah. and at 2020 or 2018, I came out of the closet mm. and even then, no hate, which is crazy. I was I was expecting yeah. to get some hate. Yeah. Um, and when I came out, not a lot of hate. But recently, I've been experiencing a lot of hate to where even my boyfriend, it's hard for us to see it because it kind of pisses us off. Yeah, like, it does definitely. in a way, not to the point where I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to write something and respond. But to the point where it's like, holy shit, people are really that triggered and that upset about my content, which is stupid because it's like, if you clearly don't like something, just yeah. keep scrolling that. Block me, right. but do not disturb. Like, if you don't like seeing something, wh- what do you get out of putting something mean? Yeah. Like, why don't you just move past it? I would rather you block me than to put something mean and rude. Yeah. No, like, oh, sure. I'm gonna, I can't wait to the day you get caught slipping. Like, that's crazy to me. It's that you have those uh, internet thugs, right? The internet people that will sit behind there, type whatever. But again, it's just like, my content is not for you, yeah. and it's okay. But it's meant for the next person. Exactly. And um, you know, now that you now that you brought it up, coming out uh, out of the closet, coming to your true colors, and feeling comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. That's huge, right? That's huge. Even even for everybody to be a hey, love who you are, love yourself, the person you are in front of that mirror. You better love that person, and if for whatever reason you don't, you have to change something. So. I, I, I do want you to take us through that, like, you know, with your family, with yourself. How long did you s- look at that person in the mirror and have to fake you, <sighs> you being were. you? Yeah. Yeah. When did you realize it was time? Um, Back in 2018 is when I realized it was time to, like, officially, like, come out. Okay. Mm-hmm. I felt it. Um, I, coming out of the closet wasn't easy. Uh, simply because I was afraid of how my family was going to take it. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, my family did not take it that well. Um, out of everyone in my family, the only support that I got, the only person that supported me was my brother. Mm. And my brother is, like, my rock. Like, he has been, since day one, my support. He stood up for me. He's been there for me when I've had financial problems. Like, he is the guy that has never, ever judged me at all. And so even when I wasn't able to come to my mom's house, to my family's house, there was a time where I wasn't able to come home. Um, When I came out, my mom no longer allowed me to come home. And it sucked. And it it really did hurt um, because I'm very close to my family. And I remember one day my brother, like, stood up for me, like, you know, as a as a religious person you should be able to let your son into this house um and it was hard for her to take it it really was but i stood my ground and i was like you know i'm not gonna come home unless you somewhat accept me and so i I didn't come home for a while and it killed me because i to not see my siblings was hard um and then as for my dad when i came out he like completely just cut me out of his life and my, my parents were split already but it wasn't. I wasn't able to see my dad. I wasn't able to talk to him. Um, I haven't seen him in about four years now. 
And it sucks because I feel like now more than ever, I, I want to see him, especially with like the accomplishment of being in a movie. It's like, I want to see him. Yeah. And I've tried reaching out. I've tried texting him. Uh, when I got a brand deal for Bud Light, you know, I texted him and I tried calling him. I left him a voicemail crying. Like, you know, like I, I got a brand deal for Bud Light. Like, this is your favorite, your favorite drink, yeah. Favorite yeah. Drink, you know? And it's like, nothing is good enough for him. And it's like, it's because I'm gay is the reason why he won't even look at me and he won't talk to me, which sucks. Yeah. It really does suck, and it breaks my heart. So how did, before coming out, like, how did you deal with that that person inside that really wanted to come out, but you knew, like, the repercussions that may come, and you're, like, obviously afraid? Yeah. Because you had, like, obviously coming from uh, Hispanics, right? Mm -hmm. Coming from Hispanic Mexican. family, Mexican families, like, yeah, let's be very honest. It's one of the things that parents look at, like, where did I go wrong, right? 1,000 fucking... Can I cuss? Ah, fuck yeah, dog. Come 1, on. 1,000 fucking percent. That was the biggest thing that I heard from both my mom and my dad is, what did I do wrong? Mm. My dad was like, well, where did I go wrong? Mm. And it's like, you, there's nothing you, you could have done to make me different like i was I, I genuinely do believe that i was born this way you can say whatever you want everyone can say that oh it's because maybe he something happened to him when he was a kid oh maybe because he was introduced to something young as a kid it was none of that like, i remember in first grade like having a crush on a boy which is crazy and i knew i was different right then and there which scared the shit out of me because i'm like we're not supposed to like boys we're supposed to like girls so yeah. since i was in first grade all throughout elementary school, all throughout middle school, all throughout high school, it, like, broke me to have to pretend to like girls. Yeah. And so it's it wasn't easy. And um, I think looking back at it now, I was a very afraid little boy. Mm -hmm. I was scared, um, especially also because of my brothers. I didn't want to disappoint them. I have two older brothers. And even throughout high school, they were both very popular, very well-known. So even if I would have came out in high school, that would have went to their reputation. So mm -hmm. I had to wait a couple of years after high school to like officially come out, wow. which is crazy. So you you put you put people in front. I did. You I even gave my mom three years after coming out to her. I gave I I get, came out to my mom and I waited two and a half years, almost three years, for her to hopefully come around before I came out on social media. So my family's known for three years prior to me coming out on social media. And I'm like, I gave you three years. There's no way I can keep going on like this. I yeah, because can't. now you're time. you're lying to yourself. Exactly. And I think that's one of the that's one of the hardest things to ever do is fake to be someone to make sure they're good with everybody. To make sure I'm good I'm good with everybody here when in reality I'm not this person. Like, yeah. I want to scream that, I, yo, I'm this. But I really can't because I know it may affect everybody around me. Yeah. And it's so scary. And, man, I applaud you for doing that because Thank you. not being accepted by the people you love the most has to be one of the toughest things in the world. Yeah. Our parents are sacred to us. They're our backbone. They're the reason why we get up. They're the reason why we want to make them proud. And, you know, we, even us saying how we feel, you know, being mental health with Mexican dads is like, ah, no, que es eso? Yeah. That's not a real thing, right? Oh, you're just sad. Oh, get up. Go do yeah. something. Go. It's because you're out and drinking and partying. That's why you feel. No, it's like, no, it's not that. Exactly. I'm partying because I am depressed and I don't want to feel it. But you put everybody else's feelings in before yours. And that's something that. Must have taken a lot. Yeah. No, for sure. And I think, uh, I think what, like, I guess breaks my heart is that there are young guys out there who I guess can't come out. And I think I, I do this for them. Mm. Or, like, I'm not going to hide who I am for anybody. Like, get, even getting rejected by my dad. Like, being rejected to someone who I love dearly to my heart, like, no one can tell me anything. And it breaks my heart, the fact that I'm like, there are people who are out there right now who are still in the closet that just can't come out, yeah. that are too afraid, that are probably, you know, young, that might get kicked out, yeah. or that are 
for all, for all we know that our parents, that our dads, and they're too afraid to come out because they're yeah. so far deep in that it's like, how can I now live the life that I want to live? Yeah. There are so many people that are DL in the world. So many. You would, <laughs> your mind would be blown. Yeah. And my mind is still blown to this day when I find out that someone is yeah. on the down low gay. And it, it blows my mind because I'm like, wait, but you have a wife and you have this and you have that. How is that even possible? But they have to go along with this image because they were taught that. They were taught that this is what you're supposed to, you know, have and yeah. you're supposed to have a wife and you're supposed to have kids and you yeah. need to have that. But there are some people who are living that life who don't want, not that necessarily they don't want that life, but they it's too late for them to go back. I'm so glad. I'm so happy for you that you had the courage. Thank the you. The courage man. to, hey, I'm a, I'm big in social media. I have a platform. I have yeah. a family. I have friends. But I got to stop lying to myself, right? Yeah. Like, so I'm, I'm glad that you brought even that up for the other people that don't have that voice. Yeah. And I, the whole thing about the podcast here and what I love about podcasts is we're unfiltered. We get to go through whatever we go through and we get to come here and we fucking say whatever we want. Yeah. And it's like, yo, why did you say that? It's like, I wanted to. That's how I felt at the moment. That's how yeah. I feel. Like, why, why should you have a say in how I feel? Exactly. And if... If I have a platform, why should you be in control of what I post? Yeah. If you fuck with me, cool. And if you don't, get the way I'm in. It's, it's not meant to be anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I mean, like, that's what life is, right? Like, exactly. the only reason I wanted to jump into that, because you brought it up, and it's very important. Yeah. You're a brother. You are a man, and you're confident in your own skin to be able to speak your mind and to have a voice. And, bro, like, again, two weeks ago, your movie premiered. <laughs> your movie premiered. Thank you, man. The craziest thing ever. Where Thank it's just you. like, and the deal with Bud Light. Here you go. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I am this person, but look, my options of success, unlimited. Yeah, exactly. Sky is the limit. The sky is literally the limit. So did you believe in yourself to ever be in the position you are now? Yes and no, to be honest. I never thought, well, for one, I never thought that I would be in a movie. Kid you not. Like, I didn't grow up, I didn't do this wanting to be an actor. Yeah. It just so happened to happen. Like, I, my name is Tony Directs. I want to direct. And I still want to direct in the future. But never did I think the videos that I make would ever book me an acting job. Yeah. Never. I never thought that in a million years. So the fact that I'm here and I'm doing this is like, a, it's just a huge blessing. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a believer of God, 100%. I don't, I don't claim a religion, but I am a big believer that there is a God, 100%. So I'm, like, very grateful for this opportunity. Man, that's, that's definitely a conversation that I know me and Jen enjoy having. And, uh, you never go through a religion part, but your own relationship with God. Yeah. Exactly. It's not about religion. It's about yeah. Religion. There's, a, there's a question in that I've heard before, and I, I love when I heard it. And now I get to ask you, it's like, what's your relationship with God? Damn, he's just going to ask me like that? He just went there. He said, what's your he relationship? Just, he just, he just, <laughs> you go first. <laughs> I'm like, finding my way. He was like. I'm finding my way towards okay. God. I think this year has taught me that there's something out there, right? Okay. And whatever it is, um, I'm not, I haven't been put in these, in these positions just by luck. So, there are some people who yes. believe in luck, and there's some people who I don't believe, believe in luck. In, not in luck. That's why I know. That's why there's some people who actually do believe in luck. Yeah. That are that they say, "Oh, I'm just lucky." It's like, no, there's. I don't think I'm lucky. I think I'm blessed. That's right. And I think my relationship with God is is great. I talk to Him when things are good. I talk to Him when things are bad. I talk to Him all the time. So I'm like, and I, I'm not saying that I talk to Him because I maybe who knows? I yeah. don't know what. Yeah. But I talk to God a lot. It's the, um, the higher power. For like the longest time when I was un, unsure of my relationship, it was I need to believe in something bigger than me and more powerful than me so I can have faith that, hey, this would all pass. Like this yeah. is going to be okay. So for the longest, it was like, yo, all praise be to God. All praise be to the highest power. Yeah. And I tell people like, again, this is not like, oh, you need to go. It's like whatever you may believe in. 
It could be in you believe in a physical object or or a non-tangible thing. And it's like, yo, that may be yours. Whatever yeah. you believe in and makes you have faith, 100%. Because when there's clouds over your head and there's no sun coming out, you have to believe in something. And the way I try to explain it to people is like, imagine you go into the tunnel and it's super dark, but you may see that little point of light at the end. Keep walking. The more you walk, the bigger that light will get, the brighter it will get. And once you get there, you won't be that same person you once were when you entered it because now you had to go through X, Y, and Z. And now, like, we're, the, other, the other day, we're, we're sitting, uh, standing on the beach after, after a night out. It was like, it took me so long to get here, and I could have never imagined me to be here. And you were like, wait, what is it? And I was like, I never imagined myself to be happy Damn. and to be here. That's what I didn't under, that I didn't know that. I didn't know I could get there. To be happy. Yeah. To be Physical. actually happy. Like, I sent you the videos yesterday, Bevan. I cleaned the fucking house. And then at the same time, like, I was like, you know what? And, you know, once you start getting cleaning, you're like, fuck, I don't need this. I'm going to throw this shit away, too. Yeah. Threw that away, and I'm like, this feels good. It's time to clean house. Mm -hmm. And I literally had probably like five, six bottles of alcohol on the top. And I, I was saw that. Yeah, and I was like, it's it's time to let go. Thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm applauding <laughs> you for that because that's 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 a, that takes a lot. Yeah. That takes a lot. I, I I'm someone who's sober. I don't drink. So for me to see that it's like not a lot of people can do that because I feel like in our community and not just in the Latino community, yeah, drinking is a heavy thing. Like people for sure. Drink, you know. We've we've saw we've seen it from our, our our dads from well from my dad that oh things are going bad or you're having problems drink Boom. it away yeah and it's like that's not I don't think that's a great solution because you're gonna feel like shit after yeah it doesn't fix anything yeah. relax it, it, it take it numbs you for quite some time but it doesn't fix anything if anything it's, it's gonna tear you down even more and it accelerates you. You're over there drunk, and then you're over here looking at the pictures of your of your girl or your boy. And you're like, I can so put them back. <laughs> and you're crying. Bro. So it's one of those things like, yeah, bro, like, you're drunk today, but tomorrow, when you wake up, yeah, that shit's still right there. Exactly. So now, like, how I posted, like, yeah, I dropped all this off. Like, I, I dumped it all out. And it's like, it doesn't mean I'm stopped drinking. It's just now there's, I have the control. Now there's a limit. Now it's like, hey, we don't need to go out and get drunk. And now we have to play uh, I hope I make it home type of game. Because yeah. it's like, yeah. bro, like, we're yeah. not going to sit here and lie and be like, oh, we've never done it. It's like, yeah, bro, we did it so many times. And people continue to do it. But one of the biggest things, and my one of my most happiest things is like, I wake up great. Exactly. No hangover. I get to come home. I get feeling. to. You're super productive. Yeah. You're clear-minded. And you don't want to take advantage of all the blessings that you get and all the times that the higher power shows mercy on you. Because all those times that you drive home drunk, you're taking, Bro, you're risking the it. Risk. The risk. You just never know. Maybe you don't get hurt, but someone else. Yeah. And all the times that he shows us mercy, well, at one point we need to do our part and be like, you know what? Thank you for doing that. Thank you for showing me. Now I got to do my part. So I think that was mine. <sighs> All right, what's uh, what's your question? We're gonna let you have so a, a gonna, question because I, this is your time, and we gotta ask you the questions. I actually have a question for you guys. All right, shoot. Do you guys have gay friends? Yes. Yeah. You guys do. Yeah. yeah. And are you guys like at one point of your lives, growing up, were you ever homophobic? No, I think I've no, I think I've always been. I've been pretty cool with everybody. Yeah. Really? Like, really yeah, like chance. these are like, I used to work at a phone company. Yeah, my manager was gay. And he's one of those like, <clears throat> like, Louis, stop. And I'm like, Mark, shut the fuck. <laughs> like, I treat him like as my homie, right? Like, yeah. just homie. But like, at the same time, it's like, I, I love the relationships I build because it's based off of an actual friendship. Like, I love you because of who you are. And when we come together, we respect each other in a way where, like, no los pasamos in any sort of way to make each other feel uncomfortable. And we can fuck around however we want, but we have that friendship. I just want the viewers to know this is a great fucking podcast. The fact that we have two 
allies here. <laughs> that are non, they don't judge others. Don't judge. Nah. This is a great fucking podcast. Thank you. For you guys to like say that. Because it's okay if you did at one point, if you were at one point homophobic. Shit, I was homophobic myself growing up. Like in middle school. Like I punked a gay kid. Pobrecito. But I did it because I wanted to impress these like this group of guys that were cool. Mm. So I was like, well, let me punk this guy really quick. And yeah. But yeah, bro, I mean, it's it's the fact that you guys are not homophobic and you guys have gay friends and you guys can have a relationship with them yeah. is a beautiful thing. I think me and Pepper are the same way and everybody here, it's the relationship. Like, I think he's a really cool dude. She's really cool. He's really cool. You're dope as fuck. I'm okay. Yeah, you're right. Nah. <laughs> he's all right. You know, though? He's now you're, right. You just he's talk. Like, he's like, you're cool, you're cool, you're cool. You're cool. You're cool. You're cool. <laughs> no, it's because, see, this is brand new. Before you got here, they're already talking shit to me. So the last time they walked into the house, they were like, oh, it looks clean. <laughs> but that's just fucking trash right there. I'm like, oh. Yeah. So, Who said that? Let me No way. No, don't go there. <laughs> don't open the closet. Don't open the closet. Um, probably have to go get the cable now. <laughs> Damn, one turns on it. I'm like, um, I'm, I'm like, hey, let me know when you guys get this shit. I know, fucking people. I don't wanna, I don't wanna like, I don't wanna lie to the people. I'm like, we're looking kind of more light skinned. You're fucking. I know what you're talking about. You're fucking Casper, dog. Ah, oh, the homie Casper. Be cool. Hey, but Casper's cute, dog. Fuck it, I'll take it. I'll take it. You just wanted to call me cute. Fuck it, I'll take it. Thank hey, you. That's, hey, that's, that's the, the, the homie Nico right there. Can I support him? Hey. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, light skin, light skin. I've been doing skin he's treatment. He's, 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 he's like, why am I getting a chub? He said, big boys are in. Fuck it. I can eat tomorrow, guys. Hey, dad, I've been telling you guys for the last two years, dad bought, but See, just. But you I have didn't... a fucking excuse. You got two kids. I ain't got an excuse. It's like, what's Yeah, Jose, excuse? I have an excuse. No I have an excuse, Jose. I don't have, I don't have kids. Uncle Bob? That ain't a thing. That you know of. That ain't a thing. Uncle that you know of. You don't have kids that you know of. Oh. There may be some out there, fool. You just. That's right. You know what? I could have been a dad. <laughs> so I could have been a dad bot. No, no te pases de ver. Te mamaste, güey. Te mamaste. Hey, pas, pórtate bien. Míralo. No te, no te portas bien. No, güey. You guys don't want to drink. Come here. No, I think once we... In, you got to have a solid friend group where everybody just fucks around. And, like, when you're like, oh, what's the limit? Fuck, there is no, no limit. No limit. limit it's just whoever stops exist. replying, it lost. The limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. <laughs> whoever <laughs> stopped replying, just lost the game because they got mad. Fuck. What's that, a TikToker, a hot Spanish? It's like, uh, el que se enoja pierde. Tú siempre pierdes, güey. Sí, güey. Yo me yo, me, yo, no, no me, yo siempre me, no aguanto, güey. No, no aguanto. Aguanta, no aguanta nada. Someone tells me something, I'm like, what the fuck? Mm, I can see that. Yeah, I get mad. That's my toxic trait. That's okay. I get mad. You had a question. Before you forget it, throw the Are question. Are rolling? Oh, everything's rolling. Oh, we're rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been oh, rolling. The reason why I asked if you guys have gay friends is because I feel like it's not easy or I applaud you guys for having gay friends and not being homophobic because not a lot of straight guys are or not a lot of straight guys can have gay friends because they're uncomfortable with themselves or they're not sure of their sexuality. Mm. So I applaud you guys for having gay friends because mm. not a lot of people can have that. Not a lot of straight guys can have that relationship with someone who is gay. Why do you think that is? Because they're not, they're not fully comfortable with themselves. Like, it's not even about, oh, well, I just don't like, or I just can't relate. It's like, you don't have to relate. Like, bro, I could be in a room full of a bunch of straight guys. I can, I feel like there are homophobic people that have met me that have been like, holy shit, you're actually cool. And it's because I'm actually, yeah, I'm like, what, what did you expect? Like what, did, like, what do you expect out of me? Like, what do you think? I'm a fucking predator? You think I'm going to fucking try to, like, attack you or, like... You know, it's crazy. Like people like on the Internet think that we're like, bro, I don't even know how to say it. They think we're like weird. But it, it the, do you think it takes it back to like, again, this is growing up the machista. How they were raised. How we raised. Yeah, like right. you cannot have friends like that. Or, and like, again, and yeah. Go for it, go for it. Go for it. No, if you have a that. friend like that, that makes you gay too. Like you're yes. going, oh, te estás juntando con aquel, you know? It's crazy. It's a derogatory term. 
Did your Did your parents stuff. ever Did your parents ever grow up saying anything like homophobic? Oh yeah, like those little jokes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think even Mexican even parents, like, even in our even in always. in our in like on our daily language, there's certain words that people say and just use it just like como sea. Yeah. Like like it's the it's in a in a funniest way like. Uh, what was it? It was a real. It was like if you're not gay with your best friend, then you're not best friends. That's right. Damn, that's true. Bro, IG that's reels are so true. fucking crazy. Wild, like they're that's like wild. IG reels are like the new Twitter. It's very uncensored. But like how if you're if you haven't held hands with your with your best friend, are you guys even best friends? Damn. If you even thought about kissing at one point, are you guys even best friends? I don't know about that one. <laughs> that's fast. Kissing your boy, facts, homie. I thought about kissing you. What you talking about? Turn, turn the mic up. Turn the mic up. That's yeah, facts, bro. If, yeah. If you like, shout shout out to my homie, Legend Forever, dog. Like, <laughs> bro, when I tell you when we were on set filming the movie together, like people were weirded out by our friendship. Like we're like super close. Super close. <laughs> super Look, close. We've held Legend hands. Forever is straight. Like, super straight. Like, he, wife and kids. I, he would tell me if he was gay. Yeah, but he's yeah. not. He's straight. Like, but our friendship is so close that we can, like, fuck around. We can, like, he'll, like, he'll be like, hold my hand. I'll be like, all right, bet. Like, I'll hold his hand. Like, we're, we, we, we fuck around a lot. But, like, if so, like an outsider sees that, they're, like, weirded out. Like, what the oh, fuck is wrong with them? It goes back to the relationships that you have with a certain person, right? Yeah. Like, me and Pepe, like, we could talk a lot of shit to each other. And we're just like, ya parale, güey. And then we keep going, we keep going. And same thing with my guy here, Jose. Like, we all have a relationship where, like, unless you're in our circle, you understand how we move and how we're, like, again, we can fuck around, talk our shit. But when we can also sit down and have a real genuine conversation yeah. about life, how we're feeling and check-ins. And that's just what our friend group is. And I'm sure there's other people that have that friend group too, where they're like, man, yeah, you have to be around us to understand how we go. And it's yeah. like, yeah. But again, coming, growing up, there's a certain way you need to be. And it's it not even just like your sexual orientation. It's life. Yeah. You got to go to school. You got to go to college. You got to have a nine to five. You have to have a 401k, retirement, kids, House, wife, todo, sas. That's that's the goal. That's the American dream. Well, now where we're at in day and age, that's not the American dream. It's not our American. It's not dream. ours. I would say yes. It, uh, it, it changes. It may have been different. our parents because our parents have the nine to five that they've been at for X amount of years, or they started a business back then, and they came from Mexico here, and they started mm -hmm. from the ground up. Well, mom, dad, like now I have an opportunity to. Break that cycle to do something different. It's, for, a, it's literally a cycle. Yes, to it's be something cycle. different, right? Be something different. My parents came from Michoacan. My parents are hard workers. My mom's a stay-at-home mom when we had my my little sister. My dad has his business. I'm following in his footsteps, but I'm showing my dad like, Dad, do you know you could get paid by posting videos? Yeah. Hey, do you oh, know? Bro, it shocks them. Yeah, like it blows their mind, bro. When they. They just don't understand that. Like, I, for the longest, my family was like, "Really? What are these videos yeah. for? Like, what are you? Like, what is? Yeah. Like, like, it's like, trust me. Stop like, fucking around. Take so it serious. Now like, it's like they see that it's like, wait, well, he's in a movie now. It's like, oh, this must have been all it paid off. And it's like, I've told you guys from day one, like, yeah. it's a process. Maybe it's just pendejadas ain't pendejadas, you know? Right. Like finally realizing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When. For you that you've been, you know, again, you've been around the podcast for now a year and about a year, a year and, and a half. Months, yeah. yeah, yeah. When do you? When did you take it serious? And when do you feel like your parents and your family would take that serious for you? Honest answer: I think uh, I started taking it seriously once we started doing the internals, and like I actually was allowed to, in a sense, right, ask a little bit more serious questions. Because before, yeah, I mean, we did our internals. But there was honestly nothing really there that was like, all right, cool. Like, Pepe yeah. has to be there. He's yeah. like a big part of the, the pod yeah. episode. So I think, once again, pretty much when I was allowed to run the internals, that's when I was like, all right, cool. I got to take it seriously. It's that, the, the trust that was everybody. I think that yeah. was a switch where before I was like, ah, I mean, cool. Like, my questions and my answers yeah. don't have to be 
as deep. They don't have to be the best. And now yeah. it's like shit. Now it's real, real. <laughs> well, I think the I think real, real. It, well, you guys were all here when uh, we did the internal at Kanye Rum Bar, and then Chris seen it for the first time. Shout out Sour Apple. And he was like, damn, the internals would go different. I'm like, I told you, dog. That was like, uh, first episode, I think, we recorded. No, just no, recently, like a couple weeks internal. ago. That was a couple weeks ago. Right? Yeah, first one, yeah. Chris was there. When, oh, right after Jay, Jay Valentino. He was. Yeah. He said that he saw our internal for the first time, and he was like, Damn dog! Like even I'm thinking about the question right now, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, like you gotta have these type of questions or these conversations with like your friend group. Like the friend group that we have is not just on camera. It's like, yo, like we fuck around with each other outside of this. Like we generally care about each other. Like, like why have you not been active for the last couple of days or hours? Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. And it's like the check ins that we need to have. So check ins are big. Your friend group, how, what is it? Who does it consist of, and how did you bring it together? My friend group is tiny, mm. small, tiny, like small, small. Like I got Legend Forever, that's like always been on my corner. I have my really, really, really good friend, one of my best friends, Ruba, who is like my rock, who has taught me to be a better person, okay. like taught me to be a better friend overall has just taught me so much in life the most positive person you'll ever meet the sweetest person you'll ever meet um i have my boyfriend of course my like my rock on my corner always by my side literally through the ugly through the bad through the great everything so he's always by my side i have my brother louis who's always there for me yeah. uh gives me good advice as well and then I can say that I have, uh, oh, my God, I'm, I'm forgetting somebody. <gasps> Can't forget them. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, for the most part, my family. My family's been very supportive, too. Loving. But, yeah, that's like my friend group. Oh, and my homie JoJo. There you go. There you go. The there homie JoJo, who, who ne has never treated me different By since the day I met him. It's just, that's, that's the homie right there. So my friend group is really, really small because I feel like everyone's like, should have a tight, small friend group. You can't have too many people. It's too chaotic, too many different opinions. And you have to have people that are going to make you feel good. What, what do you define a real friend? Someone's going to be honest with you. Someone is going to support you. Um, Someone who's going to be there for you when you need them. And someone who's just going to, like, have genuinely a good time with you and make you laugh, like, throughout all kinds of shit. And they all do that for me. They all make me laugh. They all bring me good energy. They all make me feel good. They applaud me when there's accomplishments. So I'm very big on that. It's crazy. I love that. Friends is, um... Man, just like our parents say, friends will make you or break you. That's true. I mean, and people do come and go. Don't get me wrong. People come and go. I mean, my friend Ruben and I have had this talk where we're like, <laughs> yo, like there's going to be a time where maybe we might not be as close. Yeah. And it sucks to think like that because I love you so much. But there might be a time where not that we have a fallout, but we're just not going to be as tight. So let's like make the best of this moment now. Let's make the best of our friendship now. But I think if you're real friends, like you're gonna respect that. Hey, we're different times in our life, and and this is in this moment that we're in right now, in this journey, this chapter, we may not have all the fucking free yeah. time. You know, I may not be able to see you or talk to you every day. But as I know, our viewers and followers would would agree is like you make time for who you really want to. A thousand percent, yeah. And, then and they, don't give your friends a hard time when they can't make time. And they don't hold it over your. Fucking head. Exactly. You cannot be that person. You have to give your friend time. And when you guys regroup, it's like we're, your guys are catching back up. Yeah. It's not like stop giving your friend a hard time because they can't hang out or because they're or, too busy. Or when they're going through a season. Or they're going through a season. And I they feel don't. Like he's about to go through a season, my boy. He's about what to, season? What he's season? About, he's about to fall in love. I think hey. so. Hey, you see the way he's looking at me? <laughs> Bro, I already fell in love. What you talking oh, about? Those, oh, hey, boy. I saw those at the eyes? premiere and I said, I'm Bro, at the premiere? I'm, I'm over here just with my boyfriend and I look and he's just like, 
I'm like, oh. I'm like, me? He's like, no. We were talking about this, huh? His boyfriend was like, fuck. Yeah, he, that's bro, my replacement that's right there. He hinted at me to go to the restroom, and I was like, babe, I'll be back. <laughs> You Remember said that was going to be secret. What you talking about? Oh, shit. My what bad. What you talking about? Stop playing like no, that. I actually have a question for you guys. I actually have a question for okay, you guys. Okay, go for it. Shoot have it. Have you guys ever been hit on by a gay guy before? Yeah, let them buy me drinks. It was great. Hell yeah. Damn. Free drinks? Free Say less. Oh, Say less. Look, I'm going to... I'm going to be like, hey, all let, you have to do is smile. Let, Keep the smile going. Let's play it, let's it. Play it the same role. Like, if you're out with your girl and a guy's hitting your girl, you're like, babe, don't get mad. Babe, go get us two drinks. Okay, I, yeah, you gotta and just have play you, the game. When you've been hit on by a gay guy, how does that make you feel? Be, be honest. Like, does that make you feel I'm like shit? I got it like that. <laughs> Damn. I'm for everybody. What, All right, what, what, I feel flattered because because it, it's like at the real, it, not talking shit, right? But a lot of gay people uh -huh. are super picky. So it's like when a gay person super like, picky, very picky. You, it's like shit. I got it. I guess I'm. But confidence boost. Because you go. can be, you can take it one or two ways. You can take offense to when a gay guy hits on you, or you can take it as like a huge boost or like yeah. a compliment. Boost, yeah. So you take it as a compliment. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I well, like they when we've been like at the club and they try to like. Try to sneak it. I'm like, oh my god, dog. I'm sorry, bro, but I got a girl. It's like, like oh, it's all right. And I'm like, like oh. but we can go get a drink, dog. Like, yeah. chilling. <laughs> On you. Look, I'm with this. Jose's gonna understand this. When guys go work out and they want to feel good, they're putting new PRs. They're getting muscular and ripped. We feel like, damn, a girl's gonna compliment us. We don't get compliments from it's no girls. It's, it's guys. always guys. Yeah. Hey, hey damn, dog. The they're like, damn, dog. Your legs be looking good. I'm like, thank. You're like you. You're like yeah. You think <laughs> you're all throwing it back? Like hey, oh, yeah, you think so? Right now, like, Jose's wearing pants. He usually wears like some three quarter shorts. Bro, the car, <laughs> I, the I mean, I feel like all oh, y'all should have been wearing shorts right now. Shorts, no shoes, no socks. No, like, I thought that's, no, what, we, I thought that's we, what we signed up for. We're respecting you your relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're respecting your relationship. Yeah. You were for the streets. Now you're not. Now you're not. We now got it. Not. We we're Those days are long. Gone, we're friends. Uh, we're friends. What was it? Four and a half years ago. We're friends. That are gonna keep you. We're gonna keep it loyal. Loyal. See, I can't. See, we can't. lucky. I can't speak on that. Damn. <laughs> Y'all so lucky. Oh. Okay. Man. Wait. Wait. So. So now since you asked us that question, now let me switch it over to you. When when you go out, do you get hit on by other guys? What or like do girls try to hit on you without even and how do you Man, take that? It's been forever since I've been hit on by a girl, bro. Really? No girl tries to buy you a drink or anything like that? Hell no. Do girls ever buy drinks for guys? <laughs> yeah, we did. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we did. Yeah, it happened. It's rare. Oh, y'all got it like that? We got it like yeah, that. Yeah, we're just, we're having you know a what? When I met you guys, y'all, you guys do have big hands, but I didn't know you guys got no, it like we, that. No, we had like a, we, we're having a, we literally had what a wholesome, mean? we had a wholesome bro big moment. Hearts. Huh? It means big hearts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big hands mean big No, no, no. Remember, oh. look, no, remember. Big feet means big socks. Ah. Ah, before you ah. ask, because you're going oh, down that big, road. I already know. What big socks means big chanclas. <laughs> Anyways. There's when we're sitting at the bar the other day, and it was just me, you, and Jose, and we're like, we we paid, ready to rock, and then the waitress just brings us some Jello shots, and she was like, compliments of the ladies, right? I here. thought it was me. And I wow. <laughs> and I was like, like what? Wow. Damn, we kind of got it like that. And I was What's like, what did? And they acercaron la mesa. So did and you guys seal the deal? What's going on? We're children of God. Celib we don't do that. Celebrate. Celebrate. Abstinence. Twenty twenty four. Children of God. Girl, you hear this shit? What is, what is the... What is Location the, off tonight. Hey, their chocolates were taking oh, off. Hey. Location went off. I remember that. I'm re-virginized. Oh, wow. re Mine goes off all the time. <laughs> re-virginized. <laughs> From what part? <laughs> I'm just curious. The front door, the back door? ¿Qué? Las orejas, güey. Wow. Okay, actually, I got another question for you. Oh, oh, shit, here we go. Oh, question for, you. Right, for everybody no, listening, I know the podcast is just, it's going the Tony way. This is Tony's show. This is Tony's show. Yeah, this, yeah he's the right. Uh, Tony directs. Tony directs. Yeah, yeah, watch out. Yeah. Have you guys, uh, have you guys ever had a girl <laughs> enter the back door <laughs> or play with the back door? I'm keeping it PG 13. <laughs> Has a girl ever done anything with your culo? 
Be honest. Because, <laughs> look. Why don't they answer it? Oh. What's for sure? <laughs> oh, what's for sure? <laughs> it is, huh? Same with your chest. Yeah, because y'all both got big culos. Flat as a pancake? What you talking about? Flat as a pancake? I better stand up. <laughs> wait, 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 some girls, but, but I think irala, irala. She's like, oh no, 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 no. Like, no. A mí no. A mí no. A mí me gusta que me. Ah. <laughs> ya ves. She's on it. She's on it. She's on it. I mean, girl, it's, it's it's you know, it's our bodies. Like it, it, the most less manliest thing that could ever happen is when you let's go. Ah. The way he responded to that was very like, Fuck. Ah, you'll see. Fuck. Damn. It's like when they're milking the cow. Hey, but there's, there's, I mean, look, every guy, oh, every boy. guy has a G spot. We have G spots. You know, you got that, right? You got one. But it's true. It's true. It's Girls, true. Uh, guys have G spots. Yeah. It's not even a, it's, it's, yeah. why else, why, it's why else was it put there? Guys. Why else was it put there? Be confident in your bodies. Period. Be right. co- what happens behind closed doors don't ha- doesn't have to be for the world, but there, there you go. Know. You like it's what you body. like. And no it's judgment. No judgment. You like what you like. You like what you like. You, don't <laughs> you like you your don't. legs all the way up, or you, you know? like them being all fours. Up to you, my boy. Hey, you're pretty flexible over there. <laughs> you don't know. All fours, huh? Oh, Jose, wow. don't Jose, Jose, don't you? All fours when they're sucking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what kind of podcast am I on? <laughs> no, you what started are, this. What is this? I'm you scared. opened the door. That's, <laughs> the thing. That's why we never go there. <laughs> what door did he open? Oh, my God. I don't know. He tells us. The closet door, cabrón. That's just open. That's just wide open it's now. It's wide open. Let me, <laughs> let me, he took off the hinges. <laughs> the back door. The back let door me, let me start off. Open. The, now that we're all comfortable here, Tony said, where, where am I going to come out from? The closet or what? Oh. I'm not going back in, Papa. I love you, but I'm not going back in. No. I can't. Like it didn't happen. <laughs> no. And then when when you were leaving, like no, no mames. I was like, no mamo. Oh, we heard that. <laughs> Pero yo see. <laughs> Quite well too. I'm gonna just say that. Fuck it. Who cares? All I'm gonna say is four and a half years. <laughs> well, that, that's not the only time I've been. What are you talking oh, about? Oh, 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 oh. I have a past, cabrón. That's right. You were for the calles. Oh fuck. I was for the streets at one point. Hold, hold up. Insert sad music here, fool. <laughs> when you're talking about culo, <laughs> it's just sad music. What a what a way to like almost end the year because the conversation. I mean, hey, look, these part. no no no. So these type of conversations, they're funny as fuck, but they're very honest. Thousand percent. Because yeah, I know you guys want honest. honest. Because I know everybody that's listening right now, whether it's the morning, afternoon, whatever it is, there's girls that are like. My man, my man likes that. And then there's guys listening and be like, Fuck, "Damn, I kind of like that, but I can't say that I kind of like that." I like what my girl does this for me, bro. It's a whole nother, it's a whole nother world, y'all. Oh man. I mean, look, as long as as long as whether you're a girl satisfying your man, as long as you satisfying your man in every way possible, that's all that matters. So, do you think that if your partner doesn't get satisfied by you, they'll find it somewhere else? Oh, 100%. Oh, 100%. Oh, if there's if 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 it's kind of dry at home and that bed ain't knocking and those socks aren't coming off, there's a problem. Those chunklas are staying on, there's a problem. If their socks stays on, there's, there's a, problem. a problem. It's a problem. Yeah, and then best believe if if you're not asleep, if you're not asleep after, yeah, yes. No, there's, it is a problem, but I also feel like it happens in relationships. Yeah. I do think that, that it, eventually it happens in relationships where things start to dry out a little bit. Mm. The honeymoon phase is over. Yeah. And this is a conversation that needs to be had. 
I'm t- I, I feel like me and my boyfriend are very honest with each other. Very honest. So we tell each other everything. So it's one of those things where I, I, I wish, not to say that they don't, but I know a lot of like straight guys that are in relationships don't communicate that with their woman where it's like, yo, we need to spice it up. Like they're too afraid to like admit that. Yeah. Where it's like, it's okay to admit it. Just say something like your woman will understand like, all right, well let's, let's switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Let's maybe do this. Let's do that. Let's when, try something different. Once you open that channel up for your relationship, like your partner will look at you and like, I owe, like I've been thinking about this, but I didn't know how to approach you on it. Yeah. And again, it's one of those things where, you get out of the honeymoon phase of you're being with your partner for six months, a year, whatever. But Mm -hmm. if you've been together for three more years and you're not even, you're not satisfied by your partner or vice versa, there's, there's a reason why you're, yeah, there's a reason why you're looking at other people or finding other people. Infidelity Mm -hmm. happens where it's like, well, every time I see her, hmm, I know whatever, but this person over here rocks my fucking world. Then it's just like I love this person, but I get this from this person. Temptation comes in. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a whole other line. It, it's actually, I mean, as mu- as much as we're laughing right now, it's it's a conversation of maturity. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, like how comfortable you are in your sexuality, how comfortable you are to talk about this with your partner, mm-hmm. because again, if you don't have this with your partner, she's talking or he's talking this with Somebody his or her else. friends. Yeah. yeah. His oh, or her yeah. friends, or, or somebody I else. Be yes. for, I mean, it'd be a lot better for them to talk it with you, no? Exactly. Than having to go find somebody else they feel comfortable with. Yeah, because like in you have a you have a girl and you're not giving her what she wants. Well, then there's the other guy in the DM talking to her about it and trying to spice her up, and now she's like, "Damn, my guy doesn't do that." Damn. And then he's like, "I can do that and this." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, Damn. At the same time. Oh. And it's like, oh. Ooh. oh. You really? Can do both? Damn. Like, Damn. You're gifted. <laughs> you blessed. Wait, two, two times? Two times? <laughs> not just one? Not just Three? One? Three? Not back to back? Wait. Oh, wow. Ten Where minutes? Not between? two minutes? <laughs> not ten, not two. Oh, <laughs> shout out to all the, the two minute guys out there. All the 30 second pumpers. Nah. 30 seconds. Better than 30 <laughs> seconds. That's it. There's ways you can fix that. Blue just Chew. Blue Chew. <laughs> Hymns. Just DM me. I'll tell you. Yo te cuido, wey. Yo te cuido. Where's my phone? Oh! Hey, how I'm like, wait, hold on. Hey, 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 how do you, how do you uh, last oh. more than two minutes? I start counting uh, to 100. Hey, after the 100 pod, backwards. Hey, hey, after the podcast, then, then send your way. You know what? Hey, Yo, chill. I start counting 100 backwards. <laughs> you can't even count. Like, uh, 190. Like, oh, 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 oh. 97, 72. Like, but can, you, but, can, but can you go right after? Hmm. I'm taking a nap. Huh? <laughs> I gave you the can best 30 you, seconds of my life. Can you go right after? Really fucking round? <laughs> the first one was long enough. Girl, what are we doing here? <laughs> the first one was you long know the guy up. two houses down can go <laughs> right after. He could go right after. And after oh, that, that you gotta, you got okay. Is it a thing? <laughs> okay. And, for it. and and heterosexual hookups where you have to make sure the girl finishes first. Mando. 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 You have to. And what has there ever been a, a moment where it, it didn't happen and you're like, oh, I feel horrible, or it just couldn't happen? I think it like being very transparent. I think it's one of those things where it's like, there's guys that just want to get theirs, get theirs. It's true. Okay. I got mine. Hey. That's it. They got their homies waiting at the bar. Hey, quick. Oh, you didn't see you later. School. Yeah, let's see. He said quick. He said quick. It don't got to mean anything. As as a woman, should you? You should, but I don't think most men. Or are they, don't know like, they don't know the secret. They, yeah, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They didn't, they didn't take sex ed. Iralos? <laughs> they're too busy watching Pornhub trying to copy that. Are they over here DJing? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> How? Not DJ. <laughs> Even I know not to DJ. Bro. But you're different. Man. What the fuck? Can't DJ on that shit? Nah. And you're, you're pulling the trombone? 
play the. <laughs> Stop fucking play the cello. <laughs> I mean, look, I. It's been a minute, but I think I know what to do. It's been a while. I'm no Golden Gay. I've been around. I've been around. <laughs> oh shit! What the fuck is going on? I, I think we're the pot. All right, we got to get off the sex topic, y'all. Man, conversation just been flowing. It's been good. It's, it's, been, a, been, it's, been, wild it's been a good read, bro. Honestly, that, I think that's just the most important thing of of being of having a show, but also being in an environment. Feeling safe, feeling like you could be you. And honestly, like if people can't fuck with your energy, leave the room. If people can't accept your energy and who you are, leave the room. We almost had someone leave the room. Que se vayan. Oh, que se vayan. Mira. We don't chase them, we replace them. Oh! Go to the day. Go to the day. That's we, a don't we don't chase them, we replace them. You don't chase? Hey. hey. You replace? I replace. Hey, she leaves. No. Hey, stop the camera. So hold on. Get her back. Get her back. Hold up. Hold up. No te vayas. Oh, chase or replace? I'm a lion, bro. I like to chase. Ooh. I like to chase. I like... I. I I'm not going to sit here and say I get what I want, but I will chase until I get what I want. Yeah, I'm going to just say it like that. You I'm that? not like a, oh, okay, I'm going to, you know, like, <laughs> nah. Like, I remember going to bars when I was, like, 21, and I remember my brother always told me, my other brother always told me, like, if someone, if a, still work, but if a girl rejects you, then it's not the end of the world. And so for me, I'm like, now that I'm 21... I'm going to these gay bars. I'm going to go up to guys. Like, especially at bars that are, like, older men. Mm. I just did not care. I was, like, I'm this young 21, 20-year-old 20 year old kid with all these, like, 35, 40, 45, 50-year-old men. I'm going to shoot my shot. Like, why not? And, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a, cha I, I'm a chaser. Shoot I chase. It, shoot or shoot. Sh I shoot my shot. And if I get Maybe rejected, then it is what it is. On to the next. Damn. So, and uh, not trying to go in that way anymore. Yeah. But. <laughs> Look at them. Keep so, it wholesome. Keep it in wholesome. Rejection. How do you deal with that in like workspace? Do you feel like because you're you're gay? Do you feel like you you also have to work twice as hard, or you kind of prone to being rejected in some sort of way? Cause it's a real, it's a real like jobs and everything. It's oh for sure. It's a it's a topic that honestly I think that also needs to be brought I up. Mean, that's why I wore this shirt, and that's why I made this shirt. Is rejection made me stronger? So rejection makes me stronger. Whether it's being rejected from someone who I'm going up to at a bar, whether it's being rejected from a job that I really wanted, whether it's being rejected from my family. Like, it makes me stronger. That's why I think people don't understand. Like, I made this shirt for a reason. It's for everyone who's ever been rejected. And so, for me, it's like, it, it's always made me stronger. Like, the fact that I can hear it from my dad, but the fact that my dad can disown me and tell me all these things and tell me that I'm no longer his son, like, made me stronger. Because the next person that comes around saying some stupid shit, it doesn't even face me mm. at all. Like, it doesn't faze me at all. You can tell me the nastiest, ugliest things. It won't hurt me. It takes a lot to, like, really fucking hurt me. I think that's what we had talked about uh, last week. Like, I've gotten hurt by the person I love the most. Mm. Once they hurt you, it's like anybody else can hurt you, and it's, mm. you don't feel anything. Yeah, I've been right? through worse. It's like, all right. It yeah. is what it is. Yeah, exactly. well, like, even dealing with whatever family trauma or relationships like i've been hurt uh, and i've been at my lowest point ever whatever happens now bro i can't go any deeper i've been there i Same. seen i seen the bottom i seen i i died at that point Damn and here i am there's times where we're ready where we've been ready to die right yeah so it's like all right cool we've been at our lowest and now it's like we're trying to make it somewhere yeah that's you know, crazy it ain't going back but. uh what was it it's so hard to think that the person you love the most is the same person that hurt you the most without even second thinking or second guessing. And the one person that you put all your all into is the same person that destroyed you mm -hmm. and isn't there to help you out. So it's like, 
I've been through the worst. What 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 can you do to me now that yeah, I haven't been through already? Been through heartbreak, yeah. been through losing friendships, people. Cool, been through it. I am who I am now. Like I learned. Now I I built a shield around it. Now yeah. it's the next one. And now it's like oh, I've been through I know how to maneuver. And yeah, still some are gonna hurt more than others, but mm-hmm. it's like, yo, I know this feeling. I've been through it. Yeah. It's, it's how we deal with our depression, anxiety, and everything. I've been through this before. Okay, how did I? Okay, this is how I'm gonna maneuver now. Boom, let's go. Yeah. Because if you start, if you stay the same way, then you're wasting time. You have to learn how to like move past things, and like use that yeah. as fuel. Because I'm sure we've all used some type of like hate or some type of rejection as fuel. Yeah. In our lives for like the next thing that comes up or the next opportunity or the next whatever it is in life that you're doing. It's like, oh, you don't believe in me? That's good. I'll believe in myself. Exactly. And when I make this possible, don't come don't come back this way saying you believe in me. Because mm-hmm. I remember clearly with my hands who believed in me when I needed it the most. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, it's it's again one of those it's a it's one of those things where it's a double edged sword. Where I'm this person, but that this event over here that happened is what got me here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things where I went through this loss, but now you hate the person that I am because now I'm, I overcame it. You know what I mean? Like, me overcoming it has brought me to here. Yeah. It was, um, people hate the person you became, but they don't tell the people the chapter that they made you in. Damn. You know what I mean? Like. I well, that shit hits me hard. Like, you tell all these people who I am and what I did, but you forget to tell them what you did to me. Yeah, and what you were able, like what you did to me during that time, and how this this is the repercussion. It's always yeah. easier to make somebody else look like the bad person, though. Oh, you it's know? always easier. You don't want to take any type of blame for the hurt or pain you cause in someone's life. Yeah, I'm gonna blame A, B, and C, but not me. There's a lot of people out there like that. That's right. That Ryan food, that Ryan you know, day. Call me Dr. Seuss, guys. Hello? No longer Pepe. Hey, hey, Dr. Pepe. Dr. Pepe. Pepe right there. Ah, shit. Dr. Hey, Dr. Pepe. Pepe Seuss. Dr. Pepe Seuss. Hello? Hello? Yeah. No, it's just, I think it's just that. Change like bio right after this. Damn. Hey, <laughs> don't, don't, hey, moving forward, he goes by Dr. Dr. Pepe, Pepe Seuss. Seuss. <laughs> I'm going to get sued for that shit. Uh-huh. Nah, that's you, Papa. Uh-huh. That's you. No one came up with that just yet, dog. You LLC after this show. We're yeah. opening it Dr. up Dr. right Pepe's now. Rice. Man, Pepe's so I, you look happy. I know when, when we had the conversation last week, you confided me to tell me that you, listening to one of our shows, you... You decided to make a phone call. Yeah. And it didn't go the way that... that it didn't. Uh, I watched you guys' episode and it, it motivated me and it inspired me to want to talk to my dad. And uh, I called him. And uh, I don't think he had my number saved. Um, and the conversation wasn't that great. It was short. But I can tell he didn't sound happy to talk to me. Kind of sounded irritated that he even answered my phone call. And I told him, I was like, hey, like, you know, I don't, for one, I miss you. And uh, he just said, okay. And I said, you know, I was like, I know we haven't talked or I know I haven't seen you, but I'm like, I don't know if you know, but I'm going to be in a movie. And he said, I didn't know that. And I said, okay. I'm like, well, it's going to be with George Lopez. It's going to be, you know, in selected theaters and all that. And he was just like, hey, look, I'm busy. I'll talk to you another time. Clicked. And for me... I cried like a baby after. I like cried so much because for me, for him to finally answer my phone call was, I was like, oh my God, he wants to talk to me. He wants to hear from me. And him not having my number saved was like a letdown. I can see how disappointed he was to talk to me versus I haven't talked to you in four years. I haven't seen you in four years. You would think that you would want, you'd be happy to talk to your son. And no, that wasn't the case. And I remember just crying and crying because I have such a strong relationship with my boyfriend's parents who are supportive all the way. They are supportive of his son. They're supportive of me. So when I come into the picture, it's like his dad tells me we went on a vacation with, um, I went on a vacation with my boyfriend and his parents and his dad told me, he was like, you know, you're like my son and I want to tell you that I love you. 
And to hear that is is insane. And I don't think he understands how big that is for me because to hear that from him, to tell him, for him to tell me, you're like my son and I love you, is huge. It sucks that I can't get that from my own dad. I would love to hear that from my own dad. Um, but I, I can't get that from him. Do you I haven't gotten that from him in a while. And it breaks my heart because I'm like, I love the fact that I can get that from someone else. Yeah. But it will never be the same or it, it won't it won't feel the same because it's not my dad. Yeah. Is there something you wish you could have told him in that conversation? <clears throat> or I mean, is there something that you wish you would have heard from him? I love you. I wish you would have told me I love you. Or I miss you too. Even just that. Or a simple congratulations, I'm proud of you. So would you... And I couldn't get that. We're would, proud of you. Oh, thank you, Papa. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. I, it, it's... For real. No, like, this is coming from a most genuine spot of... I see the glow that you have. We see the success. We see the how genuine you're being with us in the conversation that it has gone every, everywhere. And, you know, those things of searching of the I'm proud of you's and I love you's, you know, sometimes we may not get it from the people we wanted to the most. Yeah. And we, but we may get it from other people. And when you get it from people like us, it's because we genuinely are. And I feel it. I genuinely do feel it from you guys. I just met you guys last week, but I genuinely feel it. When you guys said that, and I, and I told my boyfriend that, I was like, when I met you guys, there was like a gravitation pulling us in. And whether it's people that we know or it's the fact that I've seen your guys' episode prior to that, but it's like I gravitated towards you guys because you guys have such a good aura. You guys have good energy. So Thank when you. I actually met you guys and talked to you guys, because I even told myself that night, I'm like, I'm going to talk to them. Yeah. I don't know when throughout the night I'm going to talk to you guys, but... You guys were there whenever I showed up. You guys were one of the first ones there. Yeah. So I was like, it's going to happen. And so I told my boyfriend, I'm like, they're super chill. Thank you, man. Like, not only are they good looking, but they're super chill. <laughs> so I was like, damn, yeah. they're really, look at him eating. Yeah. 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 He's I mean, like, thank you. Uh, thank thank you. No me digas, no me digas, no me digas. No me digas. I was, no. like, no. I was like, damn, they're more. super, you guys are super chill. Like, you guys, I can feel the love and thank you don't you. feel that right away. Now you don't get that kind of aura from people, especially in LA, right? Especially in LA, especially people in LA. people hate seeing someone glow. People hate yeah. seeing someone happy. Like, why are you so mad that I'm happy? Why are you so mad that I'm shining? That I'm because they're not. Yeah, like I hope one day you get to feel the same way I'm feeling, which is a happiness, which is confident, which is I'm in my fucking zone right now, but. Don't hate on somebody else because the energy that you put out into the world is what you get right back. Mm -hmm. So when life deals you the wrong hand, it's not the wrong hand. It's the hand that you needed to be dealt with so you can learn something from it. Like, that's the part. Like, it took me this time to be happy. Well, yeah, I had to be dealt all these other cards. Why? Because I wasn't the best person. I wasn't the best version of myself. And I wasn't being the best person to the people that really cared about me. And I had to learn my hard way. And now that I learned, and I'm still learning as I go, mm -hmm. now I'm receiving these blessings. That's why yesterday's post happened. That's why today's post happened. I needed to let go of something that was the old me in order for me to get into this new chapter in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's not a, oh, new year, new me. No, no, no. It, this has been me. This, now my life is catching up to it. Now my, now my future is here now. Yeah. And if I don't do what's, what's needed of me, then this shit's going to slip out. How you said earlier, this is not luck. Bro. This is not luck. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. This is you putting in the work, and now the opportunity met it. Yeah. And now when the opportunity meets, meets, meets you, can you fall through with it? Yeah. Can you now show out? Can you now showcase who you are, what you bring to the table, and what you're capable of? Yeah, yeah, I'm right here. I'm ready. And I am a firm believer that people do change. Yeah. We, we have to change. There's no to. way we can stay the same. I'm not the same person I was five years ago. I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. I'm, I'm a complete different person. We yeah. have to change and evolve. Yeah. And Absolutely. I will say this. You have to give, you have to let other people shine. Facts. Dude, you have to let people shine. Like everyone's moment comes. Yeah. I used to low key look at people on social media and be like, man, why, the, why are they, why, then? why are they picking up numbers and why are they blowing up and why yeah. are they 
Yeah. And doing That's... so good. Like, why? Yeah. So I had to give that moment of, like, people have to shine. People have their time to shine. Everyone mm -hmm. is going to have their moment. Right. You have to give people their moment. Yeah. You'll have yours eventually. Your time will come, and it will come in the best way possible, at the perfect timing, at the craziest timing. Yeah. But I even had to myself, like, I kid you not, I would see people that were in doing the same thing as me that were, like, flaunting things that they were doing and places they were going to where I was like, I just have to mute them. Mm -hmm. I do have to mute them. I am a firm believer in muting people because sometimes it leads to comparison. And you're going to want to compare yourself to other people who are like, wait, well, I have a podcast. They have a podcast. Why are they taking trips to Cancun every other month? Yeah. It's like sometimes you just have to mute people. You do have to mute people. I mute so many people because I'm like, you know what? I'm starting to compare myself. Yeah. And, you and can. I, you can't. Somebody said it. I don't remember where it's comparison is a thief of joy. Yeah. Once you start comparing yeah. yourself to others. It's, it's how we said uh, like two weeks ago. My time is coming. Yeah, I, do I want this right now? Yeah, I do. Am I ready to endure this? Maybe not. Maybe that's why it didn't come my way. Sure. But when my time comes, you best believe I'm going to take advantage of it. Do I know I'm better than that person? And that Yeah, I am. But there's a reason why they're there. And I cannot be mad. I cannot complain. I mean, they're clearly doing something. They're right, doing right? something right. And it's it, just, yeah. if anything, instead of using that as, I, I guess, a way of comparing yourself and making yourself feel bad. It's like use it as fuel. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It it's their time. Be be thankful for them. You know, be thankful that you able you're able to see that. I'm able to see these big people living this laugh lavish. I'm exposed to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can attain that. Okay. It makes cool. you want it even more. It's I, like oh, what are they I'm doing ready. That yeah. I'm not doing. Like I'm ready. So I can do something similar. Yeah. So and you have to surround yourself with people who are making it. Who are and doing people it. that mm -hmm. are willing to give you the opportunity because yeah. there's people that they don't literally mean. want it all for themselves. It's like, hey, come around. It's, it's like you can you can sit. I'm like you can come to the table, but there's not a chair for you. It, you know? yeah. stand, stand right there. You or, can stand. You can stand with us. Well, but you're not gonna sit. You're not gonna eat. You're us. not gonna eat. Yeah. Bro, there's, and there's people the like part. that. And I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to work with someone who is big in the industry. And I'll put out his name. His name is Coach Mike Bear. And so, Coach Mike Bear, I met him at a gym, and he put me under his wing. He, he oh. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, Coach Mike Bear, put me under his wing. Like, he was like, hey, I need someone who can do social media. And so, I was under his wing for a good two years. But while I was with him, mind you, he's someone who is successful, who's on Dr. Phil, who's well-connected, who was a life coach for so many celebrities. Yeah. That being under his wing, I learned so much much from him i was like a sponge just Love learning it. everything of how he how he does things and how he makes money and yeah i'm very blessed and fortunate that i was able to be under his wing yeah. for two years because it made me yeah. want to be as successful i wanted to i, I wanted to make moves like him yeah. so to kind of wrap our our amazing show today with you what is the biggest lesson you had to learn He's really gonna ask me that right now. He's gonna mm -hmm. ask you that. This is viral. This is gonna be a clip. Who do you think he is? Who's cool? He's gonna go. Who's cool? I think the biggest, the most organic, most authentic <laughs> podcast. Third period. Period. Answer. Ask me that question one more time. <laughs> It'll come out. It'll come right. out. So, in your career, in your life, what is the hardest lesson you had to learn? Just genuinely be yourself. Don't be anything else for anyone else. Don't pretend to be someone you're not. Just be you. Yeah. And I kid you not, that will take you far. Like, that was like a big lesson. It's like, I don't want to pretend to be someone that I'm not. Like, I'm. this is who I am. Like Demi Lovato said, this is me. <laughs> and Camp Rock. <laughs> Shout out to everybody who watches that, who, who likes that movie. Camp Rock. <laughs> No, yeah, for real. You got to you got to just be <laughs> You got to be yourself. That's one of the biggest lessons. And I and I will say this, I will go back to this. It was in the beginning, but I do want to set a message. If you are someone who is DL and you are in a position where you can't come out or you can't be yourself, try to take that time to do that. It might not be easy. The, the outcome might not be great, 
but like this is like your only life like live your life for you and i'm looking at the camera because i want people to know that it's not going to be easy you might have kids and a, and a wife i mean it it's going to be hard but or you might just still be dl or you're single and you're too afraid to come out because of your family or your parents or you might get rejected but i kid you not i told myself i'm like i'm no longer going to live my life for my parents i'm going to live my life for myself because one day i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna regret it i'm gonna regret hiding myself in the closet for x amount of years where i don't know where this could have took me or i don't know who i could have become so just live your life for you straight up damn god damn Mm, okay. Yeah, Bebe, do you have a quote for us today? We're going after that? <laughs> I know. What you mean? I didn't know turn off the that. camera. Turn off the camera. Just turn it off. Apagalo. Apagalo. No, hey, but you, had a, but you did have a good quote earlier, though. I did the uh, have a quote earlier. the uh, what was it? Um, comparison. the comparison. Is the thief of joy. joy. That was good. That was he, good. he had a good one earlier. No, this guy has what? What's his thing? He's, He's like, yo sé, yo sé mucho, pero no digo nada. Yo no sé nada. You don't know, but no digas nada. No oh, digas right. mucho. You're very quiet. He's observant. He's observant. That's oh, it is. I can He's tell observant. That's his own. He's like, hey, wait, what do you think? I'm just observing, bro. I'm just yeah. observing. Like, I'm I, like I, I, earlier in the episode, I put my head right here and I just saw his eyes go like this. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, wait, why is he so. Why isn't that when I come, when I put my hand over here? <laughs> Como se pone bien. It's because like, cosas se mueven. We're like, hey, que está. Que peo, que peo. Right, did you have do you have a quote something this week that you kind of heard that kind of resents with you? No, not this week. What? No, not this week. Okay, then how about this? What's oh. up? How do you feel right now? How do you feel in your life? The the year's ending. How do you overall feel with everything that happened this year? Everything that was thrown at you, the people that you met, the things that didn't happen for you. Like, how do you feel today, knowing that twenty twenty three is done? I feel like. 2023, I actually made 2023 count. So if I made 2023 count and it was just the last couple of months, I can't even wait to see what 2024 has in store because 2023 was a wild ride and I know 2024 is going to be even wilder. That man speaking facts. Hell How yeah. about you? Overall, with this year, <laughs> how do you feel going into 2024 and leaving 2023 behind? Man, I wrote the, um, I wrote another chapter in my book of life. That's not I've right. learned. We said it last time. I met the most broken version of myself, and I I met the most strongest version of myself. And recently, this is this is this is no kidding. This is recently, a day ago and two weeks ago. Recently, a couple hours ago, for sure. <laughs> no and I, I finally realized that I. I was able to let go of who I used to be. Who I used to be was someone that was wanting to make everybody happy and wanting to drown my own demons to not not confront them. And I decided that I'm stronger than what I, I thought I was. I walk with God. I ask God through my highest moments and my lowest moments. And I ask, if this is for me, it's going to be for me. And I trust you with everything I have. Now I am who I am. And it took me a long time, and it took me a long walk to get here. And at some points, I did sprint because I thought I needed to get there faster. And it just it bit me in the butt. Now I'm, I'm patient. I'm walking with it. I'm learning. And I'm where I need to be at the time I need to be in my life. And this is, this is perfect. Oh, how's your day going? Man, it's a dream. Boom. I'm living a dream. You seem very focused, too. Tunnel vision. Very focused. I, I know what I want. I know what I deserve. And I know what it, what I ask for. And if I'm able to get it, great. And if for whatever reason it doesn't land in my lap, it is what it is. Let go, let God. Yeah. As we everybody uses that phrase, that's one of the things where it's going to be for me at one point. Mm -hmm. But am I ready for it? Am I doing my part? Yeah. The clean house I was telling my uh, my coach today, I was like, me cleaning the house is me finally letting go of that person that used to just, ah, no one cares. I don't care. I'm going to pretend like everything's cool. Me actually doing this is like, 
it's time to move on. Yeah. It's time to turn that page in the book. It's time. Yep. Yeah, time to cleanse myself. And it's time to let go of that person who used to be the wildest one and the person that everybody thought was happy. And I wasn't. But now I am. Now it took me at this to here to be here. And I'm grateful for it. I'm blessed for it. And I thank God every day that I was able to get up and choose to fight. Hell yeah, man. So, Shit. you look like you got a question to end this right I here. I do. I want to just, Hell yeah. before, before we end it. Let's do it. I heard, read something on Instagram probably. Uh, you have to believe in yourself when no one else believes in you, right? Mm-hmm. What advice do you have for somebody that doesn't believe in themselves at the moment? <sighs> That's tough, man. That's tough because if you don't believe in yourself, that can take a huge toll on you. You have to genuinely believe the process that of whatever you're doing, whether you're going to be a painter, whether you want to be on social media, whether, whether you want to be an actor, you have to genuinely believe in yourself because not everyone's going to believe in you. Yeah. Not everyone's going to believe in you, but if you, all it takes is for you to believe in yourself and it will take you far, yeah. so far to where like no one's going to be able to stop you. So I think you have to believe in yourself in order to be successful and to be able, in order to grow. So if you don't, then you're always going to live in that shadow of, oh, what if, mm, how could this have happened? Like, nah, just start yeah. really making those moves. So, I mean, you have to believe in yourself. If you don't, I don't know what to say. Man. That's um, tough, though. That's a tough one. That's a good one. You believe in yourself? Yeah. Just you, recently. Recently? Yeah, recently. Officially. Shit. 2023. That's why I'm saying, like, it was a wild ride. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um... That's crazy. I yeah. hope I hope everybody in this episode was able to laugh, was able to ask themselves certain questions <laughs> that questions. that went questions. through. But um, I want to thank you for coming, man. Uh, for real, for making the time to come and enjoy this this time with us, opening up to not just us but to the audience, our audience, your audience, to get a little bit more of a background. Of who this person is, who who is Tony behind social media, the actor on the soon to be number one movie soon, soon. out right now, um, and I think the best way to end it is I'm proud of you. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, and you can watch How the Ringo So Christmas on Amazon Prime. There you go. Voodoo. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Apple TV, yeah. and I think now even on Star. 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 So, yeah, man, we're number six, and let's get to number one. Tell your wives, your husband, your Sanchos, Sanchos your Sanchos, Sanchos, their Sanchos and Sanchos, and the ones that don't even, didn't never make the roster. Damn. Damn. The ones that didn't even make the roster. <laughs> the, ones that, the ones that are still in the DMs. Yes, sir. Respond to them and just tell them, hey, you should watch this movie. If you, if you, want, if you want me to go out with you, Go watch this movie. Go watch it. <laughs> Show me a picture of you watching it. <laughs> There's throw it. Put up the I, number. Put up. Put up the number four with your fingers. No, I told. Make I told. Tag. I told people. I'm like, yo, I won't, if if you watch the movie, send me a picture and then throw your foot in there too. <laughs> I have a foot fetish, so I'm like, just throw, ah, throw your toes in there, throw your patas, lo que sea. Lo que sea so in your, in, for you, it's throw the number three up. For me, it's like, throw your see, let me see those toes. Let me see those toes, bro. <laughs> and if they're not pretty, just put, the, just put socks over them. <laughs> just put socks. Don't even send me a picture. My, just don't even send nothing. Man, baby, it's us a live podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go. Thank you for having me.